All right. Well, thanks, everybody. It's one o'clock. So we're going to get started. Hopefully enjoyed okay, this minute, uh, the classic SNL skit here. Um, you know, it's kind of relevant. We're talking about to go and drive through today because, you know, to go is here to stay and to go is here to help you grow. So, you know, Metro's got a lot of experience optimizing drive throughs as a way to win customer loyalty and repeat business. And so we're here to talk about some of what we've learned, you know, over the last 30 years of helping helping restaurants do this. Um, with me today, Lauren Rika and Jerry Kenlon, they're both work on some of the strategic accounts nationally. And, you know, I'm going to start with a bit of a quote here from a recent webinar by uh, Mike Walpole from Chick-fil-A. It was great. And they talk about leadership that we all need post COVID. And there's three modes, right? We've tried to keep running and to go and drive through. And that was very vital to many restaurants as they tried to keep running. As we reopen, there's a lot of things that need to be changed and adapted to deal with the new environment. But, you know, this new environment is going to stay and it's really important that we innovate here. And this is what we're going to get into today because this has been a great time to challenge and test the limits of what people can do in to go, in drive through, in curbside. And we're going to talk about ways that, you know, it, many restaurants, almost all restaurants should, and even schools have had to do this too, how they optimize that drive through curbside operation that they're trying to deal with. And with that, I'll turn it over to Lauren. Hi everybody. Okay, so over the last couple of months, it's it's no new news that we've seen uh, restaurants do business uh, in a different way, right? So pre-COVID, we would say that the majority of the revenues came from dine-in customers, right? So with to-go and delivery being a portion of that segment, delivery, of course, it was on a growth pattern, but the majority of the revenue is coming from those dine-in guests. Fast forward to April where COVID hit, not only did we see that pie shrink overall in terms of availability of restaurants, um, but the shift had, the mix had shifted to 100% takeaway, whether that be to go um, or delivery. Now today we're starting to see uh, dine-in make a little bit of a comeback because of the you know relaxed restrictions, um, but we're not looking to see dine-in graduate to levels that it had been pre-COVID anytime soon. Um, and that's for many reasons, right? So dine-in or al fresco dining, dining outdoors has some capacity constraints to it today. Um, and that's not always financially viable to a lot of restaurants. Um, they, some of them can't operate at such low capacities, so that becomes an issue. Also, customer behaviors have changed and will continue to uh, be on this, the pattern of still being leery of dining in, making sure that cleanliness, gloves, masks, etc. Um, and also, it's shown that customers value the conven convenience and speed of takeaway, which is a primary reason why we've seen delivery, the delivery segment boom over the last couple of years, pre-COVID and even into COVID times. But delivery is still costly. It's not only costly to the consumer paying delivery fees, various taxes, tips, et cetera, um, but it's very costly to the restaurant as well, um, sometimes eating into their profits by 30%. So it may not even be an option um, in the delivery segment for some customers, or I'm sorry, for some restaurants making to go um, a segment that's going to be here staying with us and it's going to be a growing segment. So during the uncertain times, uh, drive through has made a, a pretty big comeback and it has, has been proven to, to win. For example, car, uh, Starbucks, um, in, in cafes where they had added a drive through they were able to deliver 75% of their prior year revenues in those restaurants that did have that drive through So where the rest of their, uh, their cafes were hitting that 3% of revenues mark, the ones that had that drive through were up 70 or hitting 75% of prior year revenues, which is, which is impactful. For McDonald's, drive through is normally responsible for two thirds of their sales annually on a normal basis. During COVID times, drive through was responsible for 90% of their sales, meaning delivery only made up that 10%. Okay, so drive through was really important for the McDonald's system. And then Chipotle over the past, um, you know, one to two years, they had added Chipotle lanes, which is essentially a, a drive through feature. Um, and that had increased their sales by 12.9% in Q1 of 2019, just by simply adding that drive through um, feature. Next slide, please. 
The drive throughs certainly do come with challenges. Um, not every restaurant has the luxury of a large parking lot um, with drive through windows built in and an off ramp on the highway directing customers to their doors. Um, and next slide, even if they do have um, have a drive through the drive throughs are getting slammed. So here you can see there's a Dairy Queen off in the distance there. You can hardly see it and the cars are lined up 30 plus deep uh, coming around. So that impacts um, their wait times and it could um, potentially turn customers away if they see those long lines. That said though, customers or restaurants, they are adapting. Um, so here's an example of the Williamson Brothers barbecue in Georgia. What they had done is they set up their parking lot with cones and arrows and they directed dry, um, drive through customers through their parking lot. Um, they printed large win, uh, large menus on boards and covered them in vinyl. They posted them on the side of the building or on uh, catering trucks so the customers could see them. And then they simply added pop up tents. Um, there you can see the pop up tent between the two cars, creating two lanes for drive through. So they're adapting, trying to create a, a drive through with what they have, even though they don't have those drive through windows built in. And also, here's another example of a restaurant that doesn't have a parking lot at all. And so what they did is they created a pickup window through their door, it looks like. So they just used what they had to create a pickup window. We'll show it one more time. It's a little fast. So whether it's drive through or walk through, or restaurants are certainly adapting. But there's still a challenge with even adding that drive through feature, right? So where do they put all of the stuff that they need to create those drive through orders? Here is a picture of that same uh, Georgia barbecue restaurant we talked about a couple slides ago. Right now they have the luxury of using that um, dining space to create some horizontal storage space for everything they need uh, for the drive through customers. But once dine-in starts to open up again, they're not going to be able to use that space. So all the more reason that they need to use that vertical space um, uh, more efficiently. So next I'm going to turn it over to Jerry to talk to us about how to master the drive through process. Thanks, Lorraine. So, so that slide, slide said, you know, the right the tool right. for the right job. And Metro does have the right tool for the right job. Um, and the reason is that we focus on the application and not just the physical space. We actually learn the processes. So over the years, we have been on the forefront of developing solutions for our chain partners, and in particular, a series of designs specific to the drive through As such, we have identified the four really critical elements in realizing successful drive through efficiencies. We call it the soup. The most basic deliverable, the most basic thing is keep everything where it's needed. All accoutrements associated with the process, in this case, the drive-through, they're in the workspace itself. A second element is utilizing available space. Think about how important this is. In the current and post-COVID world, operators that do not have a dedicated space for prepping or processing to go orders, they're gonna need to use the space that they have. Many will not have the luxury to add a bump out or cut in a window like we saw Lauren show there. So maximizing their use of their existing space is absolutely paramount. And in the case of even the, the established QSRs that have drive throughs to Lauren's point about them getting slammed, they're gonna need more capacity. So how do you get that capacity? Well, one way to do that is you go vertical. Use the airspace over a workstation. Think about it, operators are paying rent on that space and on that, on that air itself, so they should make the most of it. And when you keep all the items associated with a process in one spot, you eliminate the need for crew members to leave the work cell, go find products throughout the rest of the, you know, the back of the house, and absolutely less steps equals more efficiency and increased speed of service. So we have a long, next slide here, Kev. No, <laughs> yeah. no soup for you if you don't do that. So we have a long, a long um, story history of, of basically designing these the type of efficiencies. And the reason we're able to do that is we leverage our modular designs to provide adjustability, adaptability, and cost-effective alternatives 
to millwork and fabricated stainless steel. Think about it. Millwork, fabricated stainless steel, they offer little or no flexibility. So we design with ergonomics and complexity reduction in mind, and our standard inexpensive accessories provide timeless solutions. So there's some examples of these timeless solutions. Next slide. Would be, this is a, a great shot, very, very visual. You could see the, the capacity gain simply by taking a, a, a staging table and adding reconfigure with different posts. But primarily what you did is you added a vertical element to it. You added grids and you added bins. You doubled, and in some cases could be tripling the capacity in the same footprint. Um, another example is the next slide, which is actually a design I did in the early 90s, dating myself here, whereas we were able to, able to provide vertical storage capacity yet still allow for line of sight through the restaurant, which was critical from a safety perspective. So, and, and again, the reason we were able to do that is because we used our grid technology. So yes, it was the 90s, but our designs stand the test of time. And frankly, they stand the test of time better than others. So while yes, uh, some of these designs have been around for years and they have been the core of our modular offering for drive-through areas, we have also developed a whole new suite of drive-through solutions that Lauren will now drive you through. Lauren? Thanks. Yeah, so we've been doing this for quite some time. As, time, as Jerry has said, there's some evidence of uh, dating back to at least the 90s. So what we had done is we, we looked at all of those solutions that we've created along the way and came up with standard solutions that are available to you in one SKU um, that would be perfect and hit that 80% of, of restaurants out there today. So option number one that you see here is just a very basic drive through stand. So what you see there, that SKU CR2430 DTPOS, yep, that's the part that you will order to get everything that you see there, yes, including those bins, okay? So there you can see it's staged in the upper, like right-hand side of that little block there. They can add a POS system, they can add the receipt printer, a cash drawer underneath, some additional stock items underneath there, and they can also have their condiments up and available within arm's reach, again, eliminating those steps as much as possible at the drive-through or staging area. Option number two is a one-two go-kart. Okay, so this is perfect. Uh, drinks become another challenge. So while the order is being created, drinks also need to go along with your order, right? So this cart, allows you to organize and make sure that you have your orders correct to go with, or I'm sorry, your drinks correct to go with the order. So this has a custom embossed top. You can see that there's go printed on the top and there's three identified areas along the top side of that unit to keep um, those orders organized and ready to go for the, or the customer. And option number three, this is a great solution, a tabletop solution. Nothing else is needed. Um, so they may have a table already available. This will allow them to gain some of that vertical space to so their condiments, organizing those condiments. It's also great to see all the condiments right there to make sure that they don't forget that fork or knife or spoon or salt and pepper, et cetera. So this is a great little, small little 18 by 24 unit. It comes with the bins um, that they can just place on top of the tabletop and have that vertical uh, space for their condiments. Option number four, um, so these are two different sizes of the same unit. We have a 2430 for that smaller footprint and also a 2448. Um, a great solution utilizing those bins um, for the condiments and also above can be staged orders, or you can add more bins and add more um, condiments to those uh, shelves as well. So staged orders when they're completed will go up overhead, indicating that they're complete. On the larger version, you can either eliminate that one, two go cart that we talked about by utilizing that extra space that's there or add it if they need um, some more staging space for cups. Great for their cash drawer, POS system, receipt printers, everything they need to the drive through. Over on the side there, you'll see these accessories are included. Everything that you see here is in that SKU. Um, and Kevin will talk a little bit later about how they're available on auto quotes. So you'll see just the Metro product um, when you go searching so you can see everything that is included. Um, but if you did need to make a custom uh, size or custom, you know, customize a little bit for a particular customer, this kind of lays out how you might do that with cantilever shelves, um, bin rails, and the, the part number of that condiment bin that you see there, which is a quantity of one. So add as many or as few as you'd like. 
And here's another version that is coming soon. This one's in the works, so you'll see this one go up on auto quotes in the coming days. Um, we're going to have two versions of it. It's a 24. General, generally, you'll see a 24 inch depth in the drive through. That I would say that's pretty typical. So we're going to have a 2448 and a 2460 version of this cart. It's going to utilize our grid system. Um, what you see over on the left hand side, just that drawing right there, that's what you're going to get with that pre configured skew. It does have the cash drawer um, included, the cash drawer slide, I'm sorry, included. Um, but this allows you to create an a la carte system using accessories, bins, bin holders. You can use uh, cylinders and cylinder holders for pens and markers and stuff that's needed at the drive through area. Sticker roll, roll holders, of course, those bins and then additional storage underneath for backup. All right, thanks, Lauren. So that pretty much wraps it up for us. All these products, you can find them on metro.com on, on the applications dropdown under drive through and staging. You can see the URL here below. Uh, these products, you know, they're either on out of quotes or will be added there shortly. And is there any questions?